The following is an encore presentation of New Expression. And welcome to another Friday edition of New Expressions. As opposed to the Thursday edition of New Expressions, yeah, which doesn't actually happen. Sure but I cancel fr- <laughs> We cancel that. Yeah, no, cancel the, that the Friday one. edition, because every Friday, <laughs> yes. uh, literally every Friday on the Central Coast, you're going to tune in 10 a.m. Yeah. You're going to hear the New Expressions program where we are avidly, intentionally, passionately conspiring for the success of each other Amen. and each other's Amen. ministries. <laughs> That's right. So that, you know, all that the Holy Spirit is accomplishing amongst us, that we might be able to celebrate that, have an awareness of it, cheer that on and, and partake of the graces that are just being dispensed across the body of Christ in really extravagant ways in the studio. No stranger to our program, Pastor Max Warren, welcome. Thank you very much. And yes. if listeners could only see your beaming face as he was saying all that, they'd be going on a high like I am right now. <laughs> and we you know we had to change it to Friday because Max can't make it on Thursdays, and that's just unacceptable to us. Not to the Thursday edition. <laughs> yes, we need Max here. <laughs> but we're really grateful that you've come in again. Amen. You know, we had you in a, a little while back, and mm. we got talking... Uh, w- w- you were sharing with us um, a, a, c- a key component of this... I don't know. It's a beautiful, uh, a beautiful gift, really, that Holy Spirit's given you to connect in in this thing called journey groups, um, and uh, and we we just started to unpack that a little, and and you 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 announced to the listeners at the time that we could anticipate um, uh, come um, 2019, and that there would be opportunity to begin to explore that. We thought, let's spend some time yes. looking into that. So, so I'm just good. you know, heads up. That's where we want to sort of cover off on today is what what it is to be engaged with journey groups and so on. But off air a moment ago, you 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 put on the radar for us this beautiful uh, passion translation of one John and and the experiential encounters of the love of the Father that seem to be doing a great work on you at the moment. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Um, just as I was sharing this with our community on Sunday and um, um, looked at the Passion Translation of 1 John 4.16. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the part where John's talking about God is love and we love God and God loves us. Mm. And um, the way the translator has expressed it is we have experienced God's intimate love. Yeah. And yeah. Ex- it's an experience, you know. The other translations talk about we've known and believed, which is true, but, but when I just read that we have experienced his intimate love, and it's like, yeah, that's so true. We often think about it, God's love in a conceptual sense, but in an experiential yeah, yeah. sense, yeah. and actually experience it. And, and I was just sharing with Craig before we came on here that, that it just something went off in me about that, and I, it's like I was transacting with that word for the rest of the day. And um, hmm. and so it wasn't it wasn't a concept. It was like I was experiencing it. I was experiencing his love. His, his he was experiencing my love for him. Wow! And it just began to grow and grow. And and as you read through the rest of that scripture, the inference really is that as we believe God, um, He lives in us. We live in Him, hmm. and His love is made perfect yep. in us. And 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 wow! And then I'm sort of drawing from that. So the more I exchange mm. with God's love, and I'll, I'll use the word transact with this, not just this conceptual knowledge of God, that's mm. that's important, but this mm. experiential encounter with, and it's an intimate one. Yes. It's intimate. It's yes. not, it's, yes. it's intimate. Yes. It's a good word, transaction. Transact. Um, <coughs> yeah. So as I transact with that, the more, because mm. this is what the scripture is effectively saying, mm. the more I become like God, the more mm. I see like God, so the more I become, you know, take on God's characteristics, and the more I see as God sees, and I just think this is awesome. Do you know that is so <coughs> the story of abounding in love towards one another? Yep. You know, um, as we posture ourselves in His love and embrace, like, and I love that you touched on affection and encounter. Mm. Um, the more that there, there is capacity to demonstrate to abound in love towards one another. They're um, impact words. That's what it is. It's impact. It's it's which is what um, John talks about further. Yeah. Talks about. So we, we love, you know, we, how can we say we love yeah. God mm. who we haven't seen mm. if we don't love our brother who we do see? Yeah. 
but but yeah, this this a burning. See, it's like the more you do it, the more mm, you do it. Come on, the more you on. engage, the more you engage. Mm. So it's 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 how do people get to this place? Mm. Because as you see, it's it's, and this is uh, when I when I talk this way, it's not sort of saying, oh well, look, uh, there's something unique for me. This is I'm just sharing yeah. what's 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 yeah. happening for me. Yep. Um, but I know for a long, long time, it was always a struggle to actually, you know, nev- never any doubt about, i give you all the theology about God's love, but to experience that and see that being at so work and then see so it actually making a change and then seeing you just wanting to love more, um, that's what that's that's what I'm really interested in, interested in the yeah. process about how God did you get me to this point. See, I want to make a statement. We have to learn how to relate. Yeah. We don't know how to relate. We have to be taught how to relate to one another, but God enables us to love one another. Yes. So, so um, that that I think is is a key thing. So when we start to talk about journey groups, that's really part of the mm. at the a key to 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 why I'm so excited about journey groups. Yeah, right. And the effect that they can do, but. Encouraging, just just love to encourage people just to transact with God's love, to yep. allow yourself to experience that love, and then begin mm. to. It's not not an experience just to keep to yourself, but as you transact with that, it begins to change you. And as mm. I said, you become more like His, mm. get more like more Godlike, mm. which is what we're all all supposed to be, and you start to see as God sees. Mm. I had a pastor, um, I was associate pastor. Well, I'm sorry. Um, Youth pastor, never want to be a social pastor. <laughs> Youth pastor, he used to drum it into all the leadership's head. Nothing is going to work if your love walk isn't working. Mm. He said that has to work, yep. yeah. especially in the capacity that you guys are maintaining in this church, because you're going to encounter people in all sorts of moods, emotions, and spheres of life, and you need to be able to react to, to no matter what they bring to you with love. It's good. It's yeah. Good. So if your love walk He's isn't working, you got to work on it. So, so, so practically, I, I remember when, when Holy Spirit was speaking to my wife and I about serving Him in a um, in a very large, broken, and vulnerable space of um, a, a big government housing estate in Sydney, and uh, and He He did a, a renewing work on our heart. We, one of the beautiful graces of of having travelled overseas to in experience something of the Toronto blessing, which I know had some different sort of um, opinions uh, I- that emerged out of the church mm. in regards to that. But I'll tell you what, my my experience, I figure I could hear about it and make my mind up or sit in judgment one way or the other about it. We actually went and involved ourselves in that. And, and in that experience, uh, my heart was utterly overwhelmed by the love of God the Father for me. Utterly overwhelmed by it. And then... The outpouring of that was immediately a calling on both my wife and I to 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 literally walk into a broken and struggling and and quite um, chaotic ha- housing commission estate in Sydney and, and and go and love and love extravagantly. And I, I made I won't say it was a vow, but I made something of a determination in my heart at that point that I wouldn't go a 24-hour period without posturing myself uh, to encounter his love. Mm. Um, you know, and, and so the bare minimum ever was ever going to be was a 24-hour period where I was just renewed by his love. And that typically looked like, you know, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., sometime ridiculous at the end of the whole of all of the day on the armchair and sitting with Abba and letting him hug me and kiss me and 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 hearing the in in my heart his his affection his declaration of sonship over me his you know all of the things that that were that ruin you for the ordinary mm. <laughs> you know yeah uh that's i just wanted to to draw on that because you know maybe listeners are going well you know um how do i posture myself to encounter his love that that was that's one of the non-negotiables in my life is at the end of or at the beginning of or at some point where it can be a rhythm of your day to to literally sit and invite him to pour or fill um interact with his love for you and vice versa 
Uh, I, I'm interested, Pastor Max. You mentioned that this that there was a, a two-way conversation that you obviously practice within your congregation as well. But where this started to, you know, again um, have some practical interaction with His love. Um, do you want to just talk about that? That you know, over this weekend, whenever it was that he. <laughs> I, I'm okay, sorry. Let, let's just go back. So I'd like to go back to yeah. two things. One comment that Eben made, and oh, also yeah. back to your experience. And then I'm, I'm thinking of of the, the listener listening out there and thinking, yeah, that's okay for you, and it's okay for you know these people. But what about me? Yeah. And um, if we can understand a little bit that because. Um, we have we've all experienced trauma in our mm. life, yeah. uh, and we've all got bad stuff. And now trauma is basically any painful experience that I can't make sense of, mm. where I feel alone. It might be something really bad, it might be bad things have happened, or it might just be an absence of good things. Mm. What that does is the memory then stores. We we tend to store all the bad stuff. We store the feelings, the emotion associated with that. And we'll st- usually have some sort of lie that'll come in from the en- enemy as well, like you know, God doesn't really love you, or mm. you, know, you, you mm. always miss out. Mm. And so, whenever that then gets triggered in us, those thoughts, it's very hard to connect with God. Mm. Mm. So I actually can't experience God's love because I've got all this other stuff banging around in my head. Mm-hmm. Now you 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 were really blessed because you got overwhelmed. God just sovereignly came and overwhelmed mm. you and your wife at, at, in Toronto, and boom, and that's fantastic. And you've been actually, you haven't kept that as a once-off experience. You've, mm. you've I'll use the word, you've transacted with it continually. Yeah. But if you if 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 someone out there is struggling with how do I really hear God, particularly when I'm I'm overwhelmed with mm. stuff. Well, the important thing is if you can understand a little bit about how God works and a little bit about how our brain works, and that, that what happens is that when we're overwhelmed, um, we've only got the bad stuff and we can't, there's no room to hear God. We can't hear God. We're desperate to hear God, but we go up to God and we give Him all our problems and we say, speak to me, speak to me. Mm. But we can't hear Him because mm. we're still in the pain of our problems. Mm. So... A better way is to, if you can start with a memory of when you knew God was there mm. and start from that place. So mm. you'll always be able to go back to your experience in Toronto yeah. and you go back to a totally interactive experience mm. with God and, 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 and you can get to that place and your body relaxes, your brain relaxes, your, what we call your relational circuits turn on and you'll be able to hear God. Mm. Now, um, what we encourage our people to do is to either gather those interactive memories you have of, of times when you are really aware of God's presence, or if you don't have those, go back and start doing appreciation. Yeah. Mm. Mm. You knew yes. I'd come back mm. to appreciation. Mm. It's a precious but thing. But creating yeah. what, what's termed appreciation memories. Um, an appreciation is memory is something where you can recall something that you're really thankful for. You can recall how you feel, and you've got that mm. sense of peace, and just because that's really what you want. You want God's peace. Yeah. Mm. So, so if you can start storing up these interactive memories, so that when the bad times come, you can go back to there. But in that, in those, in those, in those memories, or appreciate in those appreciation memories, by you, you can you literally go back there, so you, you you think what happens when you get overwhelmed with something bad? You go back to the first time it happens. You mightn't be consciously aware of it, mm. but that's where you are. All the pain's coming up. Mm. Well, instead of instead mm. of digging up pain, mm. why not develop a situation where you start to develop up an awareness of God? Mm. Yeah, and start from that place. Yeah. So as you start from that place of being aware of God's presence, then you can start to talk to Him. Mm. Then you can start to nice. be aware of his of of, ex, of experiencing yeah. that mm, love. But yeah. see, how can I experience God's love if I'm in the middle of pain? Mm. The pain's yeah. screaming at me. Yeah, mm. that's right. And yeah. it's and mm. it's screaming at me. You know, this is awful. This is too much. Mm. And you're an idiot. And you're a fool. And mm. you're a mug. And all the yeah. rest of it coming yeah. in as well. Mm. Yeah. But if I can then recall good times mm. that I've had with God. Mm. Or even if I've got nothing that I can connect with God, okay, just a good time, something that I can yeah. actually appreciate yeah. and recall, mm. then that helps to turn on my relational circuits. Then I'm in a better place to start to mm. hear God. Wow. We, do that, we do that already. Uh, you know, subconsciously we do it already. I mean, 
to, to, to give you a practical uh, example is that you're driving down the car and uh, you're driving driving down the road, of course, you're in the car, and a song comes on way back when, doing when your happier moments where that song, yep. to use the exactly. word we've been using, yep. impacts you. Yep. You remember that memory, mm. and it instantly recalls it yep. from the depths of wherever it was, yep. but that association to that song comes to the forefront, mm. and you have those happy thoughts of whenever you were, or wherever you were, when that song was played. Yep. And that's the importance of radio. It just, and that's why we have our favorite song list. And our, <laughs> that's, just, that's it reason why we have gold oldies. Mm-hmm. You know, when you hear them, you know, yep. you, some songs are painful and they remind you of a sorrowful time, but some songs remind you of, hey, you know, I remember when I took my now wife on our first date and this song was playing. You know, it takes you back. Mm. So you do it already. So your mind is already wired and triggered to do that. Yep. So it is possible to do it. You just have to actually go back and locate one of those memories and purposely store that for when I need that. I can call that back. Mm. I think psychiatrists would say, take yourself to a happy place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, so, Max so is just describing this is how you. Yeah. yeah. So, exactly. so we we, we, we consciously encourage people. Yeah. To to actually um, think of something like like a mm. happy time, mm. time that you appreciate, and we actually give a name to it. Like I was walking on the beach today. That's all walking on the beach. That's going to be yeah. my memory. And yeah. then mm. write down what it was, that, why, why you were appreciate. And be, better still, if you can sort of address it to the Father and say, Lord, I just want yeah. to appreciate this beautiful walk today. And so I just good. felt this. And you describe, look, I just felt at peace. I felt, because yeah. this is what God's peace does. It brings you to that place where everything sort of feels right. Yeah. And so mm. it's, it's a place that you've got. And then you sort of lock that away. It's stored. Mm. Yeah, and, and you can then pull it out when you need to. And then... Mm. You get a number of those that mm. brings you to that place. Like what you said there, yeah, it's that be peace that it'll be all right. Yeah, that peace yeah. that surpasses all understanding. That's right. Yeah, it reminds you that it, it passes will be all okay. understanding. Exactly, Come exactly. Wow. You can't even understand why, but it passes all understanding. Yes. See, in all your ways acknowledge Him. In, in, in mm. if we translate that, because of what it, it infers, in all your ways detect God. Yeah. Detect mm. Him. Be aware of Him mm. in all your ways, Beautiful. and He will direct your path. That's yeah. correct. So, yeah. um, so encouraging those, those I, I'm just conscious, my, my heart feels, because I guess I struggled with myself for a long time, just for people who sort of, they know about God's love, but that actual experience of it, yeah, and an overwhelming experience, yeah. and then yeah. and then being yeah. able to have something that you can tap into that. So, so appreciation is a good way to get to that place. I want to stop right there because I want to come back and pick up on that because what you said there is key. You know, if you if you haven't experienced it, really, there's no place to go. You need to experience it. I mean, Craig touched on it with, with the how he was and his wife were impacted in Toronto. Mm-hmm. I mean, it spearheaded where they were going to go. Then you need to experience that. So let's cut back to a quick song. Let's come back, and we're back. Yes, we are back. Well, I'm back. You're back. <laughs> yes, you look like yes. you're back as well. I am you? back. Awesome. You touched on. You know, you have to have that experience. But then earlier you talked about if you don't have that experience, um, you, 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 you say, okay, find that. Find something that does make you happy. Um, so leave that there for a second. And let me ask this. Is this something you actually teach in your church? You, you teach as an open lesson or is this when you're doing counseling with people? Um, because I, I'd imagine there's a lot of people out there, a lot of seekers, because I know we have a large uh, portionership of our, of, of our listeners who aren't saved. Um, but you know, they do have some form of faith or they have been in some form of faith or might have been hurt by the church and walked away but they're in various walks but we categorize them in the okay not really uh, say basket but they listen to us and I imagine that what you're talking about today a lot of those people are knee deep in pain so if they've never experienced it and they've got to find this happy place how do you do that but then how do you move forward in that in the trusting back into the gospel or trusting into some or trusting into unknown because basically we want everybody to experience the love of God because us three in this room we know what that's like and we've all been in various ways and situations through our life where we either we've walked away or just come new to Christ Craig gave his account of where he was touching Toronto and that was enough for impact for him to revolutionize his wife because that's what the word of God should do revolutionize your, your life but to a person needed in, ta- in pain or who's never experienced that love what would you say to them? I mean, if, if this is what you're teaching in your church, we have a broad church here. Preach to us, basically. 
Um, how many questions are you asking there? <laughs> one, really. It's just one, really. Um, okay, just, that was for the listenership for wherever they are, but uh, one. Okay. If you're teaching this in your church, how? Give us a... I, I'm going to say this. Rather than teaching, practicing is what I've seen. I've observed that you practice this in your church, yeah? That's right. Yeah. Okay. And but people still got a long way to go. We've still yeah. got a long way to go. Yes. We're not. We haven't arrived. It's just we're, we've begun a journey. Yeah, doesn't okay. happen overnight. We've, I get we've, that. We've begun a journey, um, and ultimately it has to be experienced. It has to be. A, I mean, we have to demonstrate it. You have to be able to connect with with any of us, really, in yeah. love of the Lord. You have to be able to. Mm. You, you have to be able to experience that love. But um, to to answer your question, um, I just want to go back with one thing: the church. For about ever since the Enlightenment, we've been convinced in the church that if we have the right information, given the right information, make the right choices, we will change. <laughs> and for 400 years, we haven't changed. Mm. <laughs> but what we've done, but see, the, the, what that has done, though, it's become the premise for how we do do church. Mm. So we do church mm. by teaching. So I'm going to mm. teach you mm. and encourage you to make the right choices, and then you'll change. Now that works for a certain segment of the population. If you're strong, often that'll work until you get overwhelmed and you and you make mm. the wrong choice anyway. Mm. Really, transformation comes by who we are mm. and where we belong. Mm -hmm. mm. And it's the, it's the understanding that 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 who we are, who God has made us to be, and who are the people that that we're with mm. that will actually bring about change. And that means that. That you see, I don't act. I don't have to be a strong person. I don't have to be a strong believer. I don't have to be. I can be a, a relatively weak person, or I can be a relatively strong person. And we're all strong and weak in different areas. Um, we actually need each other. Mm. So transformation and change and experiencing God's love. Um, yes, you can. Ex you experience it to a certain extent, listening to the radio or driving along in your car. Or, or at home, mm, mm. but it's actually meant to be experienced in community. Mm. So good, and yeah. and so because you've heard me say many many times, right back in the book in in the book of beginnings in Genesis, God said when it was just Him and mm. and man, it is not good for man to be alone. Mm. Mm. And so that's that's God's principle. So that whole process of uh, understanding who I am and who who I belong to is where I'm going to bring about change. Now, mm. see, who I am, my identity, operates on the right side of my brain. That side of my brain processes things at six, does six processes a second. The left side of my brain does five. So, right, eh? identity is found in the right side, not the mm. left side. So I can teach, I do all this teaching on the left side of my brain, mm. But it's not operating as fast as the right side. Mm. Mm. So where, what am I going to respond to? I'm going to respond to the right side of my brain. Mm. Mm. So knowing correctly who I am and knowing who my people are, that's what's going to bring about the change. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's why that's, that's why I like having you on the show, Max. I got I got to be honest, man. That's why I like having you on this church on mm. the show because you 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 teach deeper. It's not just surface, mm. but then again, it's not just preaching either. You go another level down, and it's yes, I'm preaching, but I'm trying to teach you. Uh, I'm really trying to teach you and get you to think. But then that's why I'm also upset with you because you don't come on enough. That's his fault. Mm. That, that's Craig's fault. He needs to organize that. <laughs> yeah, uh, and don't get me wrong. I love teaching. That was my profession. Okay, yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I love teaching. But yeah. it's this whole interaction with one another. That's that's where it happens. And and if if we just come to the concept of journey group, see what a journey group does. Now, so let, let me just explain a little bit about a journey group. If you got, giving you a little bit of the context, what a journey group is. It's aimed at collecting people together and giving them an experience of what we call relational discipleship. Mm. So rather than being taught a whole series of things, we actually sort of do life together in a sense. Mm. Now it's done online. And um, we have five to six, five to seven people. We meet for an hour. And, and the process is always we want to get this work out who we are and who are our people so we can get transformation. Yeah, beautiful. So we still have teaching, but it's within that context. So... Mm. The, w the way it starts out, we'll start out with, with what we call a check-in. So check-in is, well, today um, 
I'm feeling a little stressed because uh, I've had to come into the studio and talk to Craig, uh, Craig and Eben and that's very intimidating. <laughs> no, it's not really. But we, we're actually expressing a little bit about our day and saying a little bit, look, this is where I am emotionally. Look, I might be a little bit stressed. Look, I'm really feeling good. I'm feeling at peace. Um, this happened at work or this happened here or I just listened to a great song or whatever. But we're actually making it helps to make us aware of where we are emotionally mm. Mm. okay so this is because this is the, the real us so it helps us to be aware of that but it also creates within the group a greater sense of transparency and vulnerability so you, you you've taken the the leaflet that uh, happens in aa you know before they even speak hello my name is mike i'm an alcoholic they've taken ownership of that and being transparent on it and now they can speak openly and freely Basically, yeah, with that, but uh, it's speak, it's speak, si- similarity. But speak to where you're comfortable. Yeah, and and probably um, I probably wouldn't own too much, just like AA. I'm not having yeah. a go at AA, but but just more. It's sometimes I. It, it's like allow yourself to hear this for the first time, fresh. Yeah, don't try and put it so much in your experience. Um, because to be quite honest, I joined a junior group because I thought, hey, what they're doing. Mm. That's what I want to do in my church. I'll do it to find out mm. how it works. And mm. I was up front with them mm. and uh, said, look, I'm interested. I'm interested in being trained. I'd like to do this. And yeah. I found it has been transforming me. Beautiful. For listeners who missed the first couple of talks, I might have not heard you speak on that. That's a group of, of I think, about four or five people from around the world, yes. was it, that started this group. And I'm not sure. I can't remember how you found them, but you found them and um, you're up at some, you know, ridiculous hour to join in with this group. But that's where it began for you. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, so the connection with that group yes it yeah. it's actually part of a journey we've had a lot of, done a lot of work with a guy called dr jim wilder and a, an organization called thrive and um which is based in the states and also then we connected with dr marcus warner from mm. um, deeper walk international they're the ones that they're doing the journey groups through but both of these guys work together two different organizations yeah. that just work together yeah. and um uh so the so so that that's why we came across the journey groups mm. and as I said it found it was transforming me um, so I got the double bonus out of it mm. so now we're going to launch these in Australia as well and uh, we may st- th- th- so they'll be online um, and uh, like anyone in Australia can in fact anyone in the world can join mm. but they'll be at reasonable hours mine one's at midnight <laughs> <laughs> which is <And> not <laughs> as reasonable <laughs> not as reasonable not for me I'm too old to do midnight sticks <laughs> anymore <laughs> And you committed for how many weeks to that journey group? Look, you can commit for as long as you like if yeah. you're not getting anything out of it. But um, yeah. you know, it, go, it goes in, it usually goes in about seven week cycles. Right. And uh, pretty well, the ones that started, I started in May this year. I think pretty well everyone's with us except one person who I think got a job and could no longer continue with the because it's seven o'clock in America, seven a.m. Mm. in the states. And um, so. Uh, so we're pretty well stuck together and you know obviously it's a commitment and because this is what happens you actually start to bond with every yeah, one another yeah and uh, no overwhelming no just you just share and if it gets if you're getting too overwhelming you just we'll talk about it later we don't try and solve problems mm. so mm. we check in we will share maybe an appreciation story we'll mm. then look at a lesson that we've Beautiful. got that's been sent to us a few days beforehand and but it's all done relationally, so we'll talk that through, and that's asking questions mm. that just have that ability just to hit something where you've got to work it through. Yeah. And then we finish up by having what we call a two-way conversation with God, or just talking to Jesus, and we finish, and it an hour to an hour and fifteen minutes. Mm. So where do the lessons come from? Is that something a group submits and mm. the facilitator no, picks well the one? No, well the facilitators worked yep. out based on all the work from that they've done on on um, in Thrive and and um, uh, Deeper Walk International. So a, a lady called Amy Brown has, Brown has put it all together. Done an extremely good job. I, mm. I was very mm. just I've just been mm. very impressed because yeah. sort of like yeah. I've been travelling with this stuff for years and wanting to work at how can I put it all together, and suddenly there it is. But Praise wow. God, this Sensational. is awesome. Sensational. Right. Yep. Let's come to a track and come back, and I know Craig's got something to say. Craig's always got something to say, so we'll be back in a second. All right, we're back. And as I said before, Craig's got something to say. What you got? Say? Well, <laughs> you know, this is new expressions, and <laughs> this is a new expression yes. uh, uh, that's really emerging on the Central Coast. Yes. 
um, as you say, these journey groups that you've given yourself to and exploring with Mary as well uh, in the middle of the night because you connected with the context of that over in the States and, and whatever, but um, coming, you know, in, in the next couple of weeks uh, uh, into the Central Coast at a, at a time that suits the listener perfectly well, um, we want to we want to um, to make some resource available, and we want to have you back to talk through mm. the. We're ready to launch this now because we're literally just a few weeks out from that, um, and and listeners will be going, wow, a, a group where I can listen to each other, where I can be known in some way, shape, or form, and ca- and can be confident of a transformative work for myself. Um, that's something I want to align with. Um, we want to be able to point people, you know, to that. So um, if you can have a think about how we might, you know, be able to point people, obviously yeah. the rema.cc is a, a resource that listeners are familiar with. We have the new expressions page on the rema.cc website. And if people access us, mm. we can connect them with you and with the journey groups. But will they be journey groups that, that we're about to start on the coast? Will they be... Um, uh, an Australian website, or will that be through the Journey websites, or how will that? Um, you can just for ease of administration um, enrol through Deeper Walk International. Yep. Dot org, um, but they will then segment that to Australia. Yeah. Um, so you can either do it that way. I mean, if listeners want further information, I'm more than happy to talk, mm. as you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, I can give you my contact details. Um, um, but Deeper Walk International, or um, we'll also have information on our webpage, which is ge.org.au. Um, you can contact me on max at gen-e.org.au, or you can give me a call if you want to. 0418 <laughs> <coughs> Call me at the right time, I'll throw in a coffee as well. There you go, see, an invitation sent out that I'm sure some people will pick up. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So now, numbers on the group. Any specific number that it's got to be capped to or it's just Oh, they keep whatever? it to five to seven, five because, to seven? because everyone shares. So yeah. if you think about it, you're doing an hour. Yeah. So if everyone shares for five minutes, you yeah, don't have much time. time do that. So what happens if you get 21 people that want to be a part of the group? We you make more groups. Make more groups. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm, I gotta admit, I'm intrigued with this. This is, it's something a little bit different. Well, it's something very different. I've never heard anything like that at all, but uh, I, 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 I really would like it if you could keep us up to date on what's well, going That's why we've got Max yeah. coming in yeah. right on a couple of weeks' time yeah. to, to at the launch of this thing as well, because we do want to stay on top of it. But I know yes. that the more that people understand it, so deeperwalk.org. Yep. Is is one of the Deeper websites? International. Deeper Deeper Walk, yeah. International. International. Yeah. Dot org. Yeah. Wow. Uh, one of the ways in which you can register your interest in doing this journey group stuff, um, and, and uh, otherwise seek out uh, Pastor Max at Generation E Church, and there's websites for that, and there's there's uh, emails and phone numbers mm. uh, for that as well. We want to make sure that that's available on the new expressions page awesome. of Rima.cc as well. Uh, the, I anticipate because the the idea, the end goal of transformation, you know, or, or or even the end goal of abounding in love towards one another, out of encounter, uh, out of the encounters of His love. See, I, I when you were sharing about that, about the encounter and the experience of His love, I yesterday I was having a coffee here on the Central Coast, uh, and. And the waitress brought the coffee over, and I just said, oh, "Excuse me, what's your name?" And she told me her name, young young girl, and uh, and I just felt prompted, you know, uh, do you do you know that Jesus loves you? And and she said, "Oh, really? Oh, that's so nice." She said, and it was like, "Oh, this little, I didn't know that. Oh, that's so nice." It, it was almost like she was encountering yep. the invitation and and immediately the holy spirit said that's enough now just leave it there Uh, because i'm thinking oh judging on on your receptivity to that awareness that jesus loves you oh he he just wants to hug and kiss you and hold you and and whisper how much he celebrates you this is because this is the encounter experience that i draw from and that i'm i sense that you know you you're encouraging us to explore as a as a broader body of Christ, and particularly through these journey groups, um, the the encounter space, you know, it's available, right? But what I love about that, it's not only the heart where you came from, but the Holy Spirit said, 
that's enough. Yeah. Mm. Don't overwhelm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. this is the whole thing. See, I can get very enthusiastic, but mm. I keep, no, no, no. I'll just, yeah. we, and this is in our groups, we don't overwhelm one another, you mm. see. So, so for that girl, obviously God was happy yeah. for her to hear that, yeah, yeah. but that was enough for her. That's all That's all yeah. she could process at that point. Yeah. So I love the fact that, that he spoke it, yeah. and, and I love the fact that you heard it, mm. and I love the fact that you obeyed it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, uh, I got so excited in my heart at her responsiveness as an evangelist. I'm going, here we go. Yep. Holy Spirit said, that's enough. Yep. It's just the seed at the moment. It's yep. just the seed. Yep. And uh, it's the beautiful thing about, you know, the grace of evangelism, which every believer is called to, you know, like is to sow a bit of seed or do a little bit of watering or sometimes harvest as well. But, you yep. know, yeah. Um, well, Jesus said, didn't he, that, that you actually, you're, you're harvesting where you haven't sown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> i got to ask a question, because we always do when you're on the show. How's that community garden going? How's? The community gardens. Oh, really well. You uh, you can really smell it at the moment. Mm. Yes, yeah, yeah. just been distributing some good, solid manure on it, so it's... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, it's a, yeah, but, it's actually, it. but that's, that's actually important because you see, you, you, the, the seed falls into a, into a soil, mm. and the soil actually has to be prepared. Yeah, and it's like us for our own hearts. Mm. We've got to have, we've got to can be continually um, having the soil of our hearts prepared, so that mm. the word of God comes, the seed actually falls into good soil. Amen. So, um, yeah, there's a sermon in the garden all the time. I yeah. love that. Listen, I, and, the, the, and the, the, the soil that's producing a good crop, right, which looks like uh, maybe we could abound in love towards one another. Um, mm. uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put myself out there. I'm probably going to get hate mail. I just need to explain <laughs> myself really clearly. <laughs> um, uh, I grew up in a context where I learnt about the love of God. I, I learnt it. And it was clear enough to learn because we had a format of learning that was classroom-like. We had the expert, the teacher, slash preacher, pastor, yep. minister, who told us that in this textbook called the Bible, where we could read in the text that there was a, an expression of a God who loves me. And so I learnt about the God who loves me. And I learnt, and I knew the answer. Did God love me? Yes, he did, because it's in the textbook, because the preacher, teacher, professor whoever expert told me that that was the case and, and I remember you know a, a very soulish song that we used to sing of you know Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so it's essentially reiterating that the expert who showed me in the textbook that I'm loved therefore I'm loved and and I remember as a young person being <coughs> deeply frustrated that all that I had was just a knowledge of this and not an encounter of this um, and I and it really frustrated me in my um, my early adult life to the point where I just went oh, I'm done I'm done I don't need to keep meeting with a, a, a professor expert teacher who teaches me something from the textbook I just it needs to be real for me and I need to encounter it now please hear me listeners before you send the, the emails I love the word of God I'm in the word of God every day and yes it is a precious thing um, to to know with confidence what he has spoken through the, the prophets and through his word and through the revealed son of God Jesus in the word and also the practical encounters of his love Mm. the tangible affection of heaven you know there's a supernatural encounter of a loving God available for us at every moment Amen. at every moment mm. yeah Amen. and the interesting thing is you know Mark says Jesus Mark 3 Jesus selected the following to be his disciples mm. to be with him yeah yeah and yeah. the yeah. accusation yeah. against Peter Mm. Um, in the book of Acts was we can see Peter yeah. and John you have been with yeah. him Amen. Yeah. Yes. and yeah. um, I love what Earl Stanley Ooh. Jones um, famous Christian writer of last century maybe so famous most people haven't heard of him I'm not sure but <laughs> a, a great great insight into the kingdom of God and he said this he said Jesus was not the spelt out word he was the lived out word come on come on the lived out word That's not it. the spelt out word 
That's got to be the final word on the new expressions program for today. Pastor Max, would you come back in a couple of weeks and tell us some more about the journey groups? Sure. Sure, it's worth it just to see you guys. <laughs> I do. I want to hear. I want to I see how this goes. Fantastic. It's an interesting concept. Max Warren, Generation New Church. See you next week, folks. You've been listening to an encore presentation of New Expressions, which can be heard live every Friday morning at 10 a.m. on 94.9 Rima Central Coast.